Yeah, that don't do it. Romans chapter 12, and uh, let's stand, you've been seated since you walked through the door, so we're going to talk about mercy, if you can, if you can't stand, don't worry about it, the uh, Romans 12 verse 6 to 8, it says, Having been what? Gifts. Gifts. And where do they come from? Through the Spirit of God. Right? Yeah. And then what's the first gift yes. God gives us? You shall receive the yes. gift of the yes. Holy Ghost. Right? Having been gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, for the prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. For ministry let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches on teaching, or he that exhorteth, which we talked about last time, on exhortation, he that giveth, we covered that, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, and what's next? He that showeth mercy. mercy. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So we're going to call this mercy the glad gift. Mercy, the glad gift. So, Lord, we ask you now to help us to such a large subject all through Scripture, just mm -hmm. tons of verses. Thank you that you're full of mercy now. Show us uh, how to use this gift that every Christian mm -hmm. has. And may we uh, get a, our priorities straight before we make judgments on others. We thank for the mercy you've given us now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, be seated if you will, and you are. And uh, now we're going to Matthew chapter 9. So it says that that we should cultivate Nine. he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So we should be glad to exercise this gift yes. because we'll see judgment and mercy contained many times in the scriptures together. Mercy and truth. Mercy is always the first word before the truth. Get our attitude straight. Now, uh, Matthew chapter 9, and Jesus talks about mercy here. Look at verse 11 to 13. And so when the Pharisees saw, Matthew 9, Verse 11, when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn. Go ye and learn what that meaneth. And he refers back to the Old Testament. Quotes here, I will have mercy. And what? I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So uh, we see here that it is a gift. We'll see that every Christian, now we'll probably, through weeks to come, once we get into each specific gift, gifts I know I, I had a study many years ago, it's uh has a list of all the attributes of each gift that a person has. If you have a gift of giving, you'll have a list of things that go with that, that, that show why you give, why you show mercy, why you do this and that. And we'll get to that, but it's a very, very large subject on the Holy Spirit. Now, I'll turn to Matthew 5 while you're there, just a couple pages to your left. So mercy <clears throat> is the glad gift cheerfulness it says and uh, we have a couple of statements I've caught on the uh, mercy is the ability to minister for a better outcome I read some statements but I got to thinking about it but just think about when we use mercy the ability to minister for a better outcome and uh, judgment brings satisfaction that'll teach them, that'll learn them, 
Well, off with their heads, right? And uh, judgment brings satisfaction, but mercy brings joy and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. So we see here about six verses or so. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, look at verse number, uh, oh, let's see, verse 7. Blessed, what's, what does that mean? Blessed, happy, right? Blessed are the who? That's, yeah. When you get saved, you know, God changes their heart. Everybody that gets saved gets nicer. If they don't, they need to get saved. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's how you can tell a person saved because they're a different person. And so a person hangs on to all those old habits. They, they just need, they haven't surrendered to the Lord somehow. Something wrong there. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So we see here, you're blessed. If you give it, you receive it. If you give it, you receive it. Well, the opposite verse there, look at James 2.13, secondly here. James 2.13. And uh, so, blessed are the merciful, they shall find mercy. James is a, kind of a warning here. Secondly, we see James 2.13. says, uh, For he shall have judgment without mercy. Now, a person who doesn't show mercy, this is the verse. We, yeah, we need to watch out for this. For he shall have judgment without mercy that what? Hath shown, shown no mercy. And mercy's happy here, isn't it? Mercy what? Rejoiceth. Rejoiceth against judgment. So whenever there's a situation, we really need to stop and say, okay, I've got to get an attitude right before I make a judgment. That's why a good judge does that. Now, uh, ever heard of uh, Judge Roy Bean? Yeah. yeah. He was a snake, and he'd take the Bible, and he'd hang people with verses. Just because he said so, that's why. So it was right in the Bible, and he was in Texas, West Texas, I think, in the desert. And then El Paso or somewhere down there. <coughs> Amarillo, I think, maybe. And uh, where it's hot and dry, nobody wants to live. So uh, he, he was a man that had no mercy. He's uh, almost a fable, but he, he really was a fellow that lived. And was a self-appointed judge because he used guns and ropes to hang people. Judge Roy Bean. So uh, James 2.13 says we better be careful. Jesus said if we show mercy, we get mercy. If we show no mercy, we get no mercy. Now James 3.17, while you're there, 3.17, we see a list of good, really good words here. Our third scripture, James 3.17. James 3.17 says, but the wisdom... Is that a good thing or not? Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. But the wisdom that is from above is first, what? Pure, is that a good one? Now uh, then what? Peaceable, is that a good one? Yes. Uh, gentle, is that a good one? Yes. And easy to be entreated, easy to approach. Uh, full of something. Mercy. mercy. Full of mercy and good fruit. So you see this? Without partiality, without hypocrisy, everything in that verse is a positive that we want. It comes from heaven. So when we get saved, these things ought to come with getting saved. Every Christian should have all this built into their salvation. And then it says in the fruit, in 18, 318 of James, and the fruit of righteousness is sown how? Peace. 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 If you, if you, uh, Throw out, you know, you reap what you sow and you sow what you rip. And if we if we are hard and harsh and we blast somebody, well, there's not going to be any righteous fruit out of that. What does it say? The uh, <coughs> something of man. What is that? The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness. There's that word of God. Where's that found? James chapter one. Yeah, you're right there. And uh, he's quite a bit younger, you know. But the 
fruit of righteousness is sown in peace. So if we want fruit and we want it to be right, then it'll have to be done in peace. Verse 17, all those words should be in our vocabulary and in our thoughts as we show them full of mercy, it says. Fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Blessed are the peacemakers for what? They shall inherit the earth. Well, God can trust a person like this. And he can give blessings, special blessings to somebody that lives with 17 and 18. They, they're going to, God's going to take real good care of that person because they're valuable. Wyatt Earp, remember the uh, Wichita, was he the marshal of Wichita? Don't y'all watch black and white westerns anymore? <laughs> I watch him every day. He used to carry, a, a, remember the gun he used to carry? Peacemaker. What is it called? Butt line. Butt line. Butt line. Butt line. <laughs> and that, that pistol, long and slender, was about that long, wasn't it? And Twelve that, inches. What was it? Twelve inches, I think. Twelve inches? Yeah. Yeah, he came in with a bullet. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> he's still on TV on black and white, you know. 50s or 60s, but uh, they, what they call his weapon, what was it called? Peacemaker. His peacemaker. peacemaker. Yeah. And that's uh, actually, I think we have a better response from the cops if they just uh, took the word police and put on their peacemakers. And people would be, you know, they, right now, you're, I'm a, police is a hard word, yeah. you know, and kind of. And the, or peace, I know it was, peace officers written on the cars, peace officers, all right? And they're some automatic and double barrel shotgun for peacemakers. <laughs> Amen. Peace through strength, right? That's what it will be. That's what the, I mean, you know, you've got to think these things through here. Look at Colossians chapter 3. So Jesus said, we're happy if we do it. James says we're happy if we do it. And now we go to Colossians. Another good verse. There's just tons all through the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the mercy of God. 3.12, as we see here. Put on, therefore, 3.12 of Colossians about mercy. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, born again Christian, holy and beloved, right. bowels of kindness. Mercy. Mercy. It's mercy. That's the first one. Isn't it? That means that is that should be the core of everything else after that. It should be bowels of mercy, you know. And so the very depths of our soul we should be merciful people. Bowels of put it on. Mercy is kindness. Humbleness of mind, meekness. See what comes with mercy? All these things are in the toolbox of mercy. Humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. Forbearing, putting up with one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity which is the bond of perfectness or maturity here is what he's talking about. And let the peace of God, so this was, comes after the mercy there, 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be ye what? Be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. There it is. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing with Grace in your hearts to the Lord. So that we see mercy brings all that happiness. See, that's what we call mercy. Be glad it did. Now in Titus chapter 3, hang on right. Number uh, 5, we see here in the scripture search for sake of time. Titus 3 tells us the one for mercy, none of us would be sitting here tonight. One for mercy, we be, we wouldn't be saved. Uh, so we'll look at verse four to six, four to seven. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, 
not of works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his what? There it is again. That's the key word. It says here, according, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified, you can't be justified, you can't be tried twice for the same crime once the judge says not guilty. And that's why you can't lose your salvation. Being justified used to say, just as if I never sinned, but I remember one of the old teachers I had, he said, well, let's go a step further. Justify me just as if I never sinned or ever had or ever would. Eternity past, eternity future, when you justify it, is as if you never sinned at all. Being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Isn't that great? So if it wasn't for God's mercy, we uh, wouldn't know each other. We wouldn't be uh, happy together. I mean, you know, we'll be better off for showing up tonight than not showing up. I mean, we could have watched some reruns, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> but then you fall asleep and you forget what you watched. So you don't gain nothing. All right, Luke 10, number 6 out of uh, 6 here, and then we'll finish with one other passage. Yeah. Luke chapter 10. And uh, verse 30 to 37, and this is the example story of what we're talking about. The Good Samaritan parable, Luke 10, verse 30. Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Why did he do that? Well, he Ooh. saw a situation and he made a judgment. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. He saw something and he made an instant judgment. Merciless. And uh, when, uh, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Well, he must have done something. He got bad karma. I mean, you know, who did sin, Lord, him or his parents? Yeah. Yeah. Likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, did what? Made a judgment. Passed by on the other side. And a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had mercy. He had compassion on him. See that? And so... And he went to him. See, mercy just does a whole lot of good, doesn't it? Makes you happy. I, I, I imagine the guy beat half to death. I'm sure glad to see him. Went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him. Notice all the verbs here. He went and he bound and he poured and he set him and he brought him to an end and took care of him. It's an action. Mercy brings action. It doesn't bring uh, oh, I feel so uh, it's not pity. Mercy does something about it. Because remember the uh, definition of the ability to minister for a better outcome. That's what mercy does. Pity does not do anything. Say, so, oh, I feel real bad. I'll be praying for you. I'll, I'll see you later. later. Yeah. Yeah. And on the morrow, the next day, when he departed, he took out Two pence, which two pennies, that was a lot of money back then. Took out two pence and gave them, there's another verb, gave, took it out, okay? Oh, verb, 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 everywhere. And uh, gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. Well, that's a good four words, and take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Well, that's the story, and here's the question, 36. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that crossed over on the other side. Yep. Mm -hmm. He that showed mercy 
and rolled his shirt sleeves up and got something done for the man. He that showed mercy on him. What a big word. What a very powerful word. And the outcome, was it made better because of mercy? Sure. He that showed mercy on him then said, Jesus, oh, here we go. That's why we say this gift is given to every Christian. What is it? So read it with me. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. So every Christian has this. Some have cultivated it and nurtured it, and uh, and they shine, and they're they're happier than those that just avoid it and show pity but not mercy. Amen. Thank you, guys. <laughs> now. Turn to Hebrews 4.14 as we finish up here. So while you're turning to Hebrews 4.14 to 16, the, uh, so I was thinking uh, about this. Judgment, see justice and judgment are not the same word. We want justice, and sometimes we want vengeance instead of justice. We'd rather have vengeance and call it justice. Serve them right. Well, that'll, that'll teach them a lesson. Revenge. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, vengeance. So, thinking about this, judgment stops to build a gallows or a guillotine. It stops everything. When we judge, Everything stops for the gallows or the guillotine, cut their head off. Uh, and then we want, we call it justice, but we, we're, we really want judgment rather than justice. So they're not the same word. Because justice looks at all the situation. It looks at who's driving the car or who pulled the trigger, uh, who's got the money from the bank. That's a, that's a good judge, but he has, he, has to, he has to rule based on the evidence, not the thoughts. Now, the government right now is using, well, if you get a letter from the IRS, you're guilty before proven innocent. I mean, it says you're innocent before proven guilty, but when the government calls you into question, you have to come and prove your innocence. And if you dare to call them out on that, you better have a lot of money and mm -hmm. a lot of attorneys, they will bankrupt you. I mean, they operate with $31 trillion in debt, government debt, mm -hmm. right? They, 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 they can build a, a black hole and they have for 250 years. Just about. But we see here that we're innocent before proving guilty in the court of law. You don't show up even at in a, in a circuit court without an attorney. You better have legal representation because they'll judge you harshly on that. But you didn't respect the court enough to get an attorney. So judgment stops to build a gallows and a guillotine while mercy, think of it, mercy opens the door to freedom and moves forward. Mercy opens the door to freedom and always moves forward. Judgment always stops and digs in and won't go until, until that person is uh, satisfied with judgment. And sometimes we call it revenge and vengeance, but it's certainly not mercy. And people that live like that are not happy people. They don't know how. They've never exercised mercy, so therefore they don't know the joy of how many prisoners were in our prisons wrongly accused? We're finding out through DNA testing now they are innocent. Some have been in 30 to 40 years uh, accused falsely by the government or somebody lied on them, framed them. And I'll tell you, when, when they get word they're, they're getting out, there's mercy going to be shown after 20, 30, 40 years. And, and sometimes the government has to pay them millions of dollars stealing their entire life from them unjustly because of judgment, not justice. So judgment stops to build a gallows. It's, people, they can't get off of that thought. They just 
dig in, oh, if I could get my hands on them, and, and it festers, and, and your life doesn't grow, and you're unproductive, and you live a life of hurt and sorrow, while mercy opens the door to freedom and moves forward with forgiveness. Now, everybody needs to pay for their sin debt. When God showed mercy, he had Christ take that for us. And uh, sometimes we're waiting for God to even the score. God may turn it back on us and, and relieve the person we're holding a grudge against, make it easier on them and make it hard on us, give us their ball and chain. And, and on our mentally, we can't get past that. So anyway, mercy opens the door to freedom. So every situation we should say, can, is there any way we can find mercy in this crime or in this unjust thing that happened? Is there any? And that's what I have to do, you know, and that's what police have to do and leaders have to do. They have to, even before firing a person at a company, they have to say, well, let's, let's look at that. What, what really happened here? You got to you got to get the evidence before you make a judgment and see if there's any room for mercy. We've worked with some hard cases through these last almost 40 years, and uh, you, you want a way out if possible. But sometimes there is no way out. You must have judgment, and you must let the chips fall where they may. Hebrews chapter 4, last of all here, 414 to 16, and it says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So, let's read 16 together. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Isn't that a good verb? Yes. You find the word mercy, then you find the word grace, then you find the word help in that one sentence there. Right. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain judgment. Whoops. Uh, truth, uh, no, that's not there. Mercy and find grace. So when we when we get mercy, we get the favor of God upon us, and we are to show favor to others as well if we can show mercy. And that will help and to find grace to help in time of need. So mercy is the glad gift. And every Christian has this and needs to exercise it as often as possible. Agreed? Amen. I mean, these are just a few verses. I mean, there are tons on the study of mercy. This is really a big deal. So, Lord, we thank you for the time we've had together in the Word. We ask you to lead us now into the prayer time and then into some better weather, rain, and uh, we thank you for the break that's coming across the land. And so we pray now that you call to our mind all the things that need to be prayed for. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. You hear that all the time? Yeah. <laughs> now, well, we ought not say it casually, should we? No. We say, Lord, have mercy. All right. Anybody got a request or two? We got praise. Okay. Uh, our air, our air conditioner was acting up really bad yesterday. Right on. And our air conditioner, it, it's it's a it's a train, and it's not very old. Train. But um, but suddenly we were not getting any, any cold air through, and so um, so Phil was pretty sure it was the freeze was bad. So we called a technician. They come this morning, right about eight o'clock. Oh. And, uh, and he, he said um, he, he changed the battery, he changed the filter, and he cleaned the cleaned the 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 place that thing out there was outside. That what they call that? Yeah. Cleaned it up. Yeah, right here. Huh? <clears throat> outside here. Yeah. yeah. Outside, he cleaned it up right outside, and and, and uh, he said that was it. There was there was no problem with the air with the at all. Your batteries went dead on the thermostat. Yeah. 
Yeah, you got to watch the new stuff. Well, well, see, we had no clue that that was that, that was right. Yeah. And anyway, uh, he he was really he was really uh, low priced, and I right. thought, and so um, for air conditioners, you you don't know how blessed it is to have something until you think you lost it. Oh yeah. Well, Roger would. <laughs> <laughs>